After watching the trailer for and a couple of reviews of Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game, I bought it expecting to be playing a third person shooter, but I was quite surprised when that actually only turned out to be about one third of my time spent in the game. The rest of the time being split fairly evenly between watching some very well put together cutscenes and then running around exploring some maybe not so well put together very linear type of levels with a bit of platforming and jumping around put in for good measure. And these levels are often used just as a way of delivering even more dialogue. So I think it's probably fair to say that Guardians of the Galaxy is more like an interactive movie or an interactive adventure where you occasionally get to do some stuff as well as watching. That's not to say it's bad though, because the story is probably the best thing about this game, and I did love those movie-like cutscenes. Hi by the way, it's Mark here of course, bringing you my review of Guardians of the Galaxy. And if you'd like to watch the entire playthrough, as usual, there's a link right down below. Now the story here feels a little bit crazy, it is perfect for a Guardians of the Galaxy game, but I will say that this is not based on the movies, I believe it's based on the comic books, but I haven't read those, so don't quote me on that. Basically, one day the Guardians are out doing some not quite strictly legal stuff to try and earn a little bit of cash on the side, when they accidentally unleash this force of all evil called the Promise, which promptly goes out and tries to take over and destroy the universe, as forces of evil often do. Peter Quill and the rest of the Guardians, Drax, Gamora, Rocket and Groot, are kind of torn between wanting to just run away and deny all responsibility for this, and at the same time they want to do the right thing, come through as the good guys and save the world. Well, you'll be taking them on a journey around the galaxy, looking up past contacts, some friendly, some not so friendly, trying to make new allies and trying to discover what you can do to try and stop the promise from taking over everything. Playing as Peter, you'll also be playing nanny to the rest of the Guardians, who don't really get on that well at this stage, and it's up to you to forge them into a fighting team to hopefully save the universe. The game is very cutscene heavy, and it is absolutely chock full of humour and references to all the Guardians of the Galaxy great stuff. Really does feel like you are playing in a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And speaking of playing, the game really features three main elements plus a couple of extras. It's split into multiple chapters and within each chapter there'll be a lot of story cutscenes where you are basically just a spectator watching as dialogue is played out before you. There'll be some very linear levels which involves a little bit of platforming and some very minor puzzles where you'll have to use some of your team's special abilities to be able to get past certain obstacles plus a few hidden things to try and explore. And the third main element is the combat, where it is basically a third-person shooter, but don't expect to be doing all the damage, as Peter Quill, who is the only Guardian you can actually directly play as, is more of a team leader, if you like. Think of him as a quarterback on an American football team. He calls the plays, and the rest of the team make it happen. And that's how you play this. It's more about getting your Guardian teammates to do the damage and the crowd control, and using their special abilities at the right time to overcome particular enemies. There's also two other small elements to the game. One is quick time events, which you'll be suddenly thrust into a situation where you have to press a button at the particular exact right time to avoid falling off a ledge, jumping off a spaceship, or just to mash a button to get out of a clinch and save yourself. And then there's occasional boss fights as well. They are few and far between, they're heavily scripted, and they follow very solid formulas as well. So it's pretty easy once you've seen what happens to overcome them. Okay, on to graphics, sound and performance. The graphics, as you can see, look great. I think they look great. I really enjoyed them, particularly in the cutscenes. Throughout the game and the combat sections and the levels where you're exploring, the colours can get a little bit garish at times, and some of the times the contrast seems a bit way out. But I think that's by design, and I think the art style and colour seems to match up with what I've seen from the movies, particularly the second one. I thought it fit right in anyway. I particularly liked all the cutscenes, which looked amazing. The animation on the characters, and there was only a couple of small graphical glitches that I found throughout the game, and hopefully they're going to get patched out pretty soon. But I will mention one thing to look for. In the settings, there's something called sharpness. By default, it was turned to minimum, which makes everything look blurry. I thought it looked horrid. I don't know why it was set like this. I turned that up to maximum, which didn't have any issues with my rig at all. And everything looks so much cleaner and sharper and crisper. And I much preferred it like that. Now over onto the sound and there's two big deals to mention here, the voice acting and the soundtrack. The voice acting is superb, it's not the voice actors from the movies at all, but this is really really good stuff. I enjoyed all the characters voices here, it's well performed, well delivered, well recorded and sounds great. Our families have been cast out of paradise Peter Quill and into nothing. 
I think it's the same one we shot in the quarantine zone. Uh, we? You're the one who shot it. There you are, Quill. Tell Groot to stop worrying about getting arrested. I am Groot. Hey, that's my chair. Oh, then why aren't you in it? Now the soundtrack, there are two elements to this. There is streamer friendly music, which you can turn on in the settings. So you can put stuff up on YouTube and Twitch. And then there's proper licensed music. It's all great stuff from the 70s and 80s, really cheesy things, really stuff that fits with Peter Quill's recollection of his favorite music from his childhood and stuff that I absolutely love. And it will play at the most appropriate times as well throughout the game in big epic boss encounters and fights and struggles. Other sound effects within the game are just, well, they're okay, nothing too special, but it's really the soundtrack and the voice acting which take all the attention here. Now, performance-wise, I didn't have any issues. I tried to get 60 frames a second to record this for Twitch and for YouTube. No problems with that. Specs are down in the description below if you want to have a look. And generally, the game just ran very smoothly. Occasionally, the loading times felt a little bit longer than they should be, but it wasn't too bad. Okay then, on to my likes and dislikes, and starting with the good stuff, as always, my favourite thing about the game was the cutscenes, the animations, the visuals, the story, the voice acting, all that put together. I just found it pure entertainment. I could happily sit back and watch five and ten minute sections as if I was just watching an episode on the TV or part of the movie. And it's just as well that I enjoyed this, because the game involves sitting watching a lot of this stuff. Fortunately, it's all acted out and performed really really well and the story is entertaining enough to make you want to listen to it and find out what's going to happen next there are some surprises thrown in there and some twists at the end as well which i'm not going to spoil for any of you and it's really nice to see the relationships between the members of the team play out obviously rocket and groot are an inseparable duo drax and gamora don't really trust each other very much and it's cool to see those relationships change a little bit throughout the game and as you'd expect with a Guardians game, there's loads and loads of humour in there. It feels every bit like they've just pulled some of the movie out and put it into this game. Because that's how the relationship between all the characters feel, all the banter going off, the funny little quirks and references. It's all there and it is just pure entertainment. And my second favourite thing? Well, it's got to be that soundtrack. Now, the streamer-friendly music is good, don't get me wrong, but the licensed music that's the real soundtrack that you should be listening to is excellent unfortunately i can't play it in this video because i'll get copyright strikes and all sorts of issues but i'll show you the playlist in the background it's some of my favorite stuff from when i was growing up as a kid so i'm bound to like it but if you like the soundtrack from the films you're gonna like what you hear in the game too it really does add to some of the atmosphere and in particular there's one feature of the combat where you can call a huddle, a team meeting, and you can, if you choose the right options, inspire your team to go on and do greater damage for a little while. It gets a little buff, and often that will result in an epic piece of music playing as well, which really adds to the atmosphere. It's amazing how much the right music at the right time can change your experience in a game. Not just this one, but any game, and I think this gets it right. And the third thing that I really like about the game is that it does just feel like a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I think I've mentioned it already, but if you like the films, you'll probably enjoy the game, at least watching the story play out. Now that doesn't seem like an awful lot of likes, does it? But there's one other thing I want to mention here, and I want to talk about the combat. I'm not going to say I loved it. I kind of enjoyed it, but a lot of other reviewers have said it's a load of garbage. I disagree with that. It's just different. You just don't expect to be the big damage dealer when you're playing this. It's all about managing the other Guardians to do their special moves and attacks for you and do the damage there. And if you time things right, you can pull off some amazing combinations and combo attacks. Sometimes that does feel random, but it looks pretty good when it works. However, the combat side isn't great, but it's not terrible. So I'm squeezing it in here between the likes and the dislikes. And speaking of the bad stuff, let's start now. The first thing I want to say is that I feel the game has probably released a little bit too early. There are some things that just need a bit more polish. There's bugs and glitches. Yes, all games come with a few bugs and hopefully they get patched out. But there was one level that for me totally broke towards the end and resulted in me having to redo the entire thing, which was a real pain. And there are some sections where the game just 
gets it completely wrong. One of the quick time events where I had to reach over and mash a button during a cutscene to avoid something bad happening, the game was telling me to press the wrong button. This was highly annoying because I was mashing this button like mad and nothing was happening. And I had to repeat this section about five or six times and we couldn't work out what the hell was going on. And it was only on the very last attempt, by chance, as I reached over to mash the left alt button that the game was telling me to press, I accidentally hit the space bar and I saw something happen on screen. And then I realized it was telling me to press the wrong damn button. That wasted a lot of my time and that should have been something that was very easily fixed. There's also another section where you're flying your spaceship as after it's been hit and you're trying to crash land it where the controls just feel absolutely broken. I tried this bit three or four times and eventually had to go in and remap all the spaceship flying controls to take off various mouse control and things because it was trying to recenter all the time and flying me into obstacles. Other times flying the ship was absolutely fine so I don't know why it was just that particular bit which seemed bust but it definitely did. But they weren't game breaking issues, they were just annoyances. Another thing that really got on my nerves, even though I mentioned how I liked the banter between the characters earlier in the cutscenes, but as well in the levels as you're running around exploring, sometimes there is just too much. I mean, the other Guardians, they never stop talking, ever. They never stop shouting at each other, at taking the mick out of each other and arguing with each other. And sometimes this just goes on too long. For example, if you're trying to read a piece of text on the screen after you found some lore item and you've got them shouting in each ear, it just drives you mad. And also, in certain instances, one of the characters will be telling you what you need to do in a, maybe a combat encounter, like go and get the guy on the bridge or go and trigger that thing. And they're giving you advice, but the other ones are still shouting and arguing over the top. And you can't quite make out what's banter and what's actual instructions and what's important. And I think that was just gone a little bit too far, which is kind of funny because I feel like it went a bit too far in the second Guardians movie at times as well. And there's just a bit too much of that. I also wasn't particularly thrilled with the general levels where you're just walking around exploring. There's a bit of platforming involved and jumping from place to place. And you're looking for secret little hidden bits off to the side. Now these levels are very, very linear. So if you see a little side passage or a little section of pipes you can crawl under going off one way or the other, you almost be certain that just around that corner will be something to pick up, some resources to upgrade your gear with, or maybe a new skin for the characters so you can change their appearances. The trouble is, every time you go off down one of these little corridors, the rest of the Guardians start shouting at you, hey, you're going the wrong way, what are you doing over there? Come on, we're in a rush here. Every time, and it gets really annoying because you know you have to go and look down these things. You need to get the upgrades and you need to get the extra, well, you don't need the extra skins, but it's nice to get them. Not that I found any I particularly liked, but you might. But again, there's that banter there that's just a bit too much. It needs turning down a bit. And also, there's the level's just uh, not very interesting. They usually just use as a way to deliver more dialogue. And honestly, I'd be happier with most of them if they just gave me another cutscene to watch, because I really enjoyed those. Now, I talked a little bit about the combat earlier, which was just okay, nothing special. But when it comes to the enemies, there isn't enough variety. There's just the same themes used over and over again, which gets a little bit repetitive. There's the guy with the shield that you have to shoot with your ice elemental. Oh, there's the thing with the fire elemental that you have to do to do damage to him. It's repeated from area to area. Could have done with a bit more variety in there. And the boss fights, well, they are very scripted, very formulaic. Once you see what you're supposed to do, it's just a case of repeating that over and over again in each phase of the fight until you've won. So they're not that challenging. You might want to play it on a harder difficulty level to get some real challenge out of this, but I'd recommend just playing it for the story, really. Now, for replayability, I don't think there's a huge amount there, personally. The story is going to be much the same. You do get to make a few choices throughout the game, which will determine which allies will come and help you out in the final fight. And you might get some different outcomes there, depending on how you respond to them earlier in the game. You can try those out if you want. But there's nothing going to be too different. It's like, would you want to watch a movie again after, immediately after you've just seen it? Sometimes you do, if it's really great. This one, I personally probably wouldn't want to play through it all the way again. You can go around trying to collect the extra skins for the characters, but is it going to be worth the bother? Only you can answer that. And the final thing that really annoyed me, and there's absolutely no need for this in a single player game, especially one that's designed for an offline experience like this, is that it requires an always online internet connection. 
Yes, that's right. It actually uses de novo as copy protection and DRM management and that other sort of bullshit. And you need to be connected to the internet, otherwise you can't actually play the game. It's absolutely pointless. You don't connect to other players, you don't play with other players, but you need to be on the internet so you can actually start the damn game. And this was a big issue because de novo actually went down one day and people who had just bought the game found that they couldn't go and play it. It wasn't just Guardians of the Galaxy, as it turns out. It was a whole load of other games that used de novo as well. But if you look back across YouTube, you'll see that this damn copy protection system pops up an awful lot, causing trouble for a lot of people across a variety of games. It only ever really causes inconvenience for genuine customers because the pirates always seem to know a way around it, right? So overall, I did actually enjoy my time in Guardians of the Galaxy. For all, I've listed a lot more dislikes than likes, but I was entertained by it. I enjoyed watching it as I would enjoy watching a movie. And I enjoyed seeing the characters and how they responded and what they talked. And the humor that is thrown at you all the time was really great. And that soundtrack, of course. So overall, I'm rating it 7 out of 10. I'd probably wait for a sale on this. And that's always going to be better after it's been patched as well. But I did enjoy my time in it, but I probably don't want to play it again anytime soon.